Hello Internet, today we have a rare and interesting problem with this EVGA 2080 that for some reasons does not detect the PCI Express cables. Once powered on, you can see it displays this warning message, and that's basically what we're going to fix today. The sticker on this card looks legit, which means the chances of our successful repair are very high, so let's remove these 300 screws and see what we have. As expected, no one had opened this card before, that's great. In case you were wondering how I clean the core, I use these pads. I would pick up the large chunks with the swab and then soak the core with this pad. Whatever's in this pad, it dissolves thermal paste very well. I'll gently brush between the capacitors and just like that we have a super clean core. And I'll do the same for the heatsink, where you can see how well it really works. Back to the original problem, for some reason this card rejects to detect the cable, so let's do some basic measurements, maybe we would find something strange. 12 volt kilo ohms, 3.3 with 212k, USB-C over 20k, almost 300 ohms on 1.8 volt, PEX with 13 ohms, 5 volt with 12k, and the rest of these coils are all 12 volt. This card draws just under 1 amp in idle, which is normal. 1.8 volt is good. PEX is good. Core is getting warm, which means we have core and memory and 5 volt and 12 on the rest of the coils. Even 3.3 volt is looking good, so next thing to check are the phases. For that, I'll be using an oscilloscope and I will touch the coil on the side of the MOSFET. Everything seems to be looking normal, and yet we have a problem somewhere. I've only seen this problem once in my entire repair career, with a 1070 card, where a problem was caused by a broken connection between power monitoring chip and the core. While this board does support that chip, it does not have it. Instead, it's using two other chips to monitor power, and those are located here. Since there are two of them, they should have nearly identical readings, so I will go ahead and test them both. And this is basically what I measured, indicating that those chips are working and that the problem may be somewhere else. As I was poking around, I found this capacitor that looks like someone tried to work on it before, so I will fix that real quick. But wait, didn't I say this card wasn't open before? I did. I have no explanation as to why this capacitor looks like someone had tried to solder it. I'm guessing we can't trust those warranty stickers anymore. Because clearly, someone had opened this card. At least the backplate. Ok, now let's go back to the original problem with the cable. If we look at the pinout for each connector, the 6-pin connector has one pin called input PEX. And the 8-pin connector has two input PEX pins. All of those pins are typically grounded by the cable itself, so if you measure those pins while the cables are connected to the PCB, they should be grounded, and if not, then you have a problem. In any case, all of these pins go through the series of resistors and logic resistors and end up at this 0 ohm resistor. Specifically, this end of this resistor reads GPIO12 low perf. Asterisk which goes directly under the GPU. To test if this pin actually does make its way under the GPU, we're gonna have to temporarily remove connected components out of the way, uh, leaving that pad to be connected to nothing but the core. Basically I'm going to move this resistor here. The transistor is not populated, which leaves us with one more resistor that I need to move.
Now let's probe any of the highlighted pads. I'm going to probe this pad in a diode mode and I get 0.2 volt voltage drop, which means this pad is connected to the core. Okay, I'll solder those resistors back on and now I want to check if the entire logic circuit works. What I do is I connect the riser and power the card while checking the voltage on any of those input PEX pins I talked about earlier. I do have some voltage on those pins, which means that everything seems to work okay. But remember, those pins are grounded by the cable, so it makes perfect sense to see no voltage on those pins when cable is plugged in. I also tried to flash BIOS and booting to Windows. It does show the device, but it's missing a lot of information. And not having any 2080s nearby that I could use for reference, I'm back to square one. I guess the only thing I can do right now is to reboil the core. So let's reboil the core. Okay, so the core is done and nothing has changed, but something did change, specifically this resistor here. Why? Well, look at the original resistor. When I was measuring this resistor at the top, it measured perfect 2.2 kilo ohms, but at the bottom, this resistor had no legs left. In comparison, this resistor had pads on the top and the bottom. And this explains why the entire detection circuit seemed like it was working, but it never did. And now that it does work, I'm going to show you the referencing image so that you can use it if you ever run into this problem yourself. Needless to say, this entire video could be two seconds long just showing this image. Seriously. In any case, let's try to boot this card again and see if it works. We do get a picture and we do get a complaint about the cables not being plugged in. So now let's plug them in and try again. Nope, still doesn't work. 
Okay, so let's check what we have on each end of this resistor. 1.8 volt on this end as expected and 0 0.8 volt on this end which is what you would expect to come from a 2.2k resistor. So then why doesn't it work? If I'm not mistaken, and don't quote me on that, in order for the core to assume power stage go from low to high, it needs to have it at least 1 volt. So what I'll do is I will force this logic to produce 1 volt by placing a lower value resistor to allow more current through. I'll try 1.2k instead of 2.2 and now I get 1.1 volt which I hope is high enough. Only one way to find out is to boot the card and see if it produces a picture. And yes, we have a picture. I'll run the memory test real quick while I'm at it to save some time. And to save some time I really need because it took me a week to find this resistor. At the very least I learned a lot about this circuit so if I ever get a card similar issue I'll know what to do. What I want to do now is to apply thermal paste and assemble the card just to realize that there's another problem. And that problem is the fan on the right is very noisy and it does not want to spin as you would expect. For whatever reason it stays at 100% regardless of the speed I set in the afterburner. Looking at the connector, it seems like one of the pins is not all the way through the terminal. Possibly not making good connection, but as I later discovered, this wasn't the case. I tried swapping connectors, but no matter what I do, one side of the fan refuses to spin like the other, so... Let's use an oscilloscope to look for the PVN signal on fan 1. That looks good. Now let's look at the RPM. Fan 1 shows good reading. You can see that the wave gets closer as fan spins faster. Fan 2 shows good reading for the RPM as well, but the PVM signal is simply a straight line. In comparison to fan 1 where we get a nice square wave, fan 2 gives us a flat line which is why the fan is always on high speed. On the board view, PVM signal for fan 2 comes from this area here. Specifically, it is generated by this U35, so let's see what this thing is. According to schematic, U35 is an end gate, and so when I look at them, they both seem to work fine, but for whatever reason, the one on the left is getting 3.3 volt on those two pins, and the one on the right is getting 1 volt on those two pins, which makes no sense. What I'll do is I'll swap them around and see if it changes anything. And when I did, nothing has changed. And then I began to wonder, is this going to be one of those resistors with root pads? But no, that wasn't the case. Because I tried swapping capacitors and all of these resistors around, and I had absolutely no change. At which point I realized that there's nothing else for me to think of. But there is a solution. The solution is nothing new. Some card manufacturers use this trick to save money on components, so that's what I'll be doing now. The idea is simple. I will remove this resistor and this end gate, and then I will pull this PVM pin from fan 1 to PVM pin to fan 2 by connecting these two with the jumper wire. Something like that should do the trick. Basically, both fans will run off one PVM signal, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. With the card powered and the fans connected, let's check for a PVM signal for fan 1 and fan 2. Both seem to work okay, so let's boot into Windows and see what it does. It seems to be responding to the slider in the afterburner, but it dies if RPM is below 40%. And the reason for that is that this is not an original fan. You can see it does not have an EVGA logo on it, as the other one does. And since I don't have a fan like that, 
I'm gonna have to leave it as is. As for this card itself, it does work and is already in the hands of its owner, so all I have left for you is my usual goodbye.